Easter greetings to you and to yours. Welcome to a worship service of the Presbyterian Church in Fredericksburg, Virginia. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for joining us. I am Alan Fisher, one of the pastors on staff here. This service comes to you from our historic sanctuary and is shared with the prayers and love and greeting of our session and the entire congregation. May God bless you with peace, hope, and love on this joyous day of resurrection. A worship bulletin for this service is available to you through our church website, that's fredericksburgpc.org, and wherever and whenever you view this service, we hope you will want to participate actively in worship through prayer and hymns and congregational responses and giving. Please send your gifts by mail or by clicking the online giving button at our website. We thank you for your continuing faithful support of our ministries and mission in these days. Whether we worship separately or with loved ones, at home or with friends, Jesus invites us to worship God in spirit and in truth. Let us prepare our hearts to worship God. whose Son is risen. Beloved Church, behold the victory of our God. Jesus, our Lord, has conquered the grave. Christ, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let our lives resound with joy. Christ, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Our worship of God. Thanks be to God. Our worship of God today will begin in prayer. Lord, weeping comes for a night, but joy comes in the morning. God of power and might. Death has been defeated and we shout, Alleluia. Let all that we do today be a prayer of praise as we revel in the good news. The God of our salvation has triumphed over sin and death, bringing forth the one who makes everything alive. Out of the garden of violence and hate, which evil has planted, you bring forth a spring harvest of love and forgiveness. You have shut the doors of pain and death and opened the gates of glory to those who trust in you and follow as your faithful servants. You speak and open our eyes to faith. You touch our lips with glad songs of victory. You roll away our fears so we can tell everyone we have seen the risen Lord. Through Christ, glory and honor, praise and thanksgiving are yours, God of new life, with the Holy Spirit in your holy people on this first day of the week and in all the days to come. Amen. Amen. Let our praise continue in the singing of our hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
is open to us, the gates of righteousness that we may enter through them, confident in God's love, revealed to us in and through Jesus, God's Son, our Savior. In honesty and in penitence, let us confess our sin as we pray together. Lord Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been raised from the waters of baptism to share in your glorious resurrection. Yet we have not lived as Easter people. We are unsure of your promises, confused about your will, and afraid in the face of danger. Whenever we are tempted to fear death, give us courage to confess your Easter victory. Whenever we are distracted by petty conflicts, keep our minds on your reconciling love. Whenever we are overwhelmed by the power of evil, reveal again to us your triumph over the destructive powers of oppression. Forgive us our sin. Again in prayer we join our voices. In your mercy, hear our prayers and let our lives be a testimony to your salvation through the love of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the stone rolled away came emptiness of a tomb that held captive the crucified, of the space that was once filled with death, of the cross that now pointed to greater truth, of God's love in spite of ourselves. With the stone rolled away came questions from, from those whose world lay shattered, from those who would demand living proof, from those who were seeking a sign of promise, breeding confidence, assurance, and trust. With the stone rolled away came light to illumine the darkness of suspicion and fear to dispel, to dispel the shadows, shadows of distrust, anxiety, insecurity, to radiate with the beams of new hope and understanding the life about to be lived. With the stone rolled away comes a future. With a truth that outshines the wisdom of ages, with the space to be filled with the kingdom of God, with the company of those who through history confess, Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Amen. text to share the peace of Christ today. Let us pray. Living God, today's good news is so wondrous, so magnificent that we struggle to wrap our heads around it. Give our hearts the wisdom to receive that which our heads cannot fully understand. Remove the stones that block the portals of our minds. Shine your light so that it may take over the darkness within. Send your spirit to fill our whole bodies with your resurrection promise, so we may go and tell and be and do. This we pray in your holy and good name. 
Amen. Amen. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. Our Psalter lesson today is drawn from Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord had, has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in his eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen.
In the joyous festival of Easter, Christians proclaim that God triumphs even over death itself. Easter celebrates not the regular renewal of the earth in springtime, not even the astounding event of the resuscitation of an individual, but the faithfulness of God whose promises are secure. In Jesus Christ, God enables believers not only to glimpse, but to embody an alternative perspective on the world, one shaped by the knowledge that God indeed creates, that God's power indeed triumphs over all other powers, and that in Jesus Christ, God signals the redemption of humankind. Our reading is part of an early reflection of the church on the ethical implications of Jesus' resurrection for believers from the letter to the church in Colossia, the third chapter. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This is a most remarkable day. A day like any other before, and we pray a day like no other ever ahead again. The world is hushed. Great centers of commerce and industry, of tourism and travel are quiet, and there have actually been reports of the earth itself vibrating less in these days of public hibernation and restrictions on crowds and gatherings. It is an extraordinary time. But it is not the first Easter without huge choirs and glorious music, without overflowing Christian churches and extended family gatherings, activities, and travel, stretch your mind, if you can, to the emptiness of today.
Yet if we turn to the Easter story proper in any of the Gospels, we can find remarkable silence. Perhaps the greatest silence of all Scripture. Some parts of the church have for millennia observed the time between Jesus' crucifixion through this morning with vigils that incorporate enormous periods of silence. It's easy to imagine, isn't it, the civil and religious authorities of Jesus' day exhausted after the showdown? They were doubtless relieved to have all that unpleasantness surrounding the rabbi from Galilee behind them. This day in that year found the most faithful followers huddled away from their friends, hiding out with a fear different from ours today. Instead of pandemic, the disciples were afraid of the religious and political authorities who'd crucified Jesus and may possibly have been coming after them too. Perhaps they also feared Jesus. After all, they'd sworn never to deny or disown him, but when everything collapsed, they scrambled and fled. So when it really happened, when Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of God, the garden was empty. Think of it. Nowhere does the Bible offer a description of the resurrection itself. No language telling us exactly how it happened. No speculation as to what went on in the tomb on that first Easter morning. Silence is what we hear. It's all the women expect as they approach the tomb early that day. And what they find or don't find has transformed the world before and since. In Matthew's account, they are startled by an earthquake and an angel speaking to them. Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. We're told they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. What an understatement. Frightened beyond belief, I imagine them, too amazed to remember the angel's words, guarding against having their grief turned into a more disastrous tragedy, they ran with hearts and minds bursting with emotion. But that's not all. Suddenly Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. What started is the new age of redemption with Christ's resurrection. Totally silent, unseen, not witnessed by human eyes, unassisted by human hands, that age would begin to spread exponentially around the world. There's a refrain in Matthew's account. Did you hear it? Come and see, go and tell. And fueled by the Holy Spirit, a group of discouraged, dispirited fisher folk became evangelists and apostles of the way that would eventually become known as the church. Come and see. Go and tell was a formula that spread from silence and aloneness this morning. They may have indeed been huddled in fear, but over time, this small band of uneducated common folk, outcasts, losers, upended the empire. Salvation arrived for all believing humankind if you read to the end of the New Testament, this same gospel redeems the entire cosmos. And all of this emanates out of a glorious emptiness that we remember at Easter. Whether gathered or scattered, whether near or far from the ones we love, it begins in silence.
then come and see. Go and tell. It is why we gather and have gathered to recall this story today. The power of Jesus' resurrection to redeem the world is still strong and transformative in our day. In the beauty of this sanctuary, once functioned a wartime field hospital, ministering to the wounds and illnesses of a most brutal war. Christians have been empowered by the resurrection of Jesus to serve and to love through every crisis, from pandemics to natural disasters to world wars. Remember how Christians historically sacrificed for others during epidemics and plagues, how Christians built the first hospitals where caring for the sick could happen safely, their courageous conviction to love and to care for the least and the poor bore witness to the Holy Spirit's power. And the result was more an expanding than a diminishing church and the spread of the gospel to the ends of the earth. You are the church. You are Christ's body in the world. Whether gathered or scattered, you are witnesses to the amazing good news of the gospel. Whenever the compassionate love of Jesus is incarnated in your work and your words, wherever we serve the needs of others with mercy and love and justice, we bear witness to the resurrection of our Lord. What began in silence has become a universal chorus of praise and witness. I have no doubt that empty cemeteries or empty pews still to this day are no match for the power of Jesus' resurrection. The deep silence gives way to great good news. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Our affirmation of faith this morning makes use of a number of scripture verses. It's printed in your bulletin. Would you please join your voice to saints in every age as together we say what we believe. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved if we hold it fast. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day, and that he appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and to the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus Christ is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is our Lord and our God. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and our lives for prayer. Let us join our lives in prayer. God most high, we praise you with every word we speak and with every moment we fall silent. For you are Lord of our lives, reigning over us in power begotten by sacrifice. You meet us with a love that will never let us go. You utter words of mercy and forgiveness that override the hurts and heal our brokenness. You offer new beginnings where we had expected only dead ends. We give you thanks and praise for the mystery of your suffering love that gives us life. We give you thanks and praise that you know our weakness and hear our prayers. We give you thanks and praise that all our dying and living is held in your good keeping. Given such great blessings and lavished with such grace, we cannot help but be awakened to the cries of those who have no earthly hope. We hear the call of the hungry and the groans of the destitute from the very young to the very old. In the joy and hope of this Easter morning, in the midst of our singing and shouting, we know there are those who are bewildered and sad. We pray for those who suffer from depression, loneliness, and fear. 
We pray for those held hostage to addiction and chronic illness that debilitates. We pray for those places and peoples in our world where death and domination rule, where imperial powers ignore the poor, where war never ends, where children are malnourished, where parents grieve because they cannot provide, where accidents happen and where senseless death abounds. Creator of the universe, you made the world in beauty and restore all things in glory through the victory of Jesus Christ. We ask that wherever your image is still disfigured by poverty, sickness, selfishness, war, and greed, the new creation in Jesus Christ may appear in justice, love, and peace to the glory of your name. Be with those who do not share our Easter joy. Be with those who live in the shadow of darkness and despair, those who live with the hopelessness of shattered dreams, trust betrayed, opportunities lost, compassion denied. Be with those who live without faith or hope or love, who see no resurrection, no promise of new beginnings for themselves or for the world. Almighty and eternal God, whose goodness and grace overflowed when you raised Jesus from the dead, let your goodness and grace continue to flow upon your created world and all those who live in it. We give thanks for the church in every age and lift up the faithful around the world gathered today. We celebrate the reach of the gospel of Jesus Christ through faithful ministry and despite human unfaithfulness. We pray for communities of faith in this time of upheaval and change when it seems as though our life is being uprooted and our institutions are being torn down. In the joy and hope of this bright day, and in the midst of these unpredictable times, lead us to realize the depth and breadth of what it means to be your Easter people, ones called to work for justice and life for all creation. God of the living, long ago it was faithful women who proclaimed the good news of Jesus' resurrection, and the world was forever changed. Teach us to keep faith with them, that our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, our faith as true. Guide us, who have come to see the stone rolled away, in enduring hope that no matter who we are, no matter where life has taken us, no matter what choices we have made, no matter what sins we have committed, we will find Christ in our midst and help us to bear witness to the promise of resurrection, to hold those in despair and believe for them that love is stronger than death. The empty tomb assures us that nothing we can do and nothing done to us is beyond your power to recreate. Be with us as we revel and delight in Christ's triumph, celebrating together in spirit the beauty of new life. For we offer ourselves and our prayers, both spoken and unspoken, in the name of the one who brings us to everlasting joy, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand and join our voices in singing, Christ is risen, shout Hosanna. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. 
again the great good news, Christ is risen from the dead. Tell the good news, the power of death shall no more oppress us. Live the good news, we are free to love as he has loved us. And now may God who raised Jesus from the dead bless you and by the power of the Holy Spirit raise you with him in glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you, following the conclusion of this service, to go outside wherever you are, and to sing or shout and proclaim that news. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 